hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the previous video we discussed about the simple loop generator okay the basic things related to that so there we discussed the uh, also the basic introductory concepts related to the generator the generator principles and the various uh, Faraday and Fleming's rule related to that. So there we discussed about the simple loop generator, the three main parts or components of the loop generator, the magnetic field, the conductor or group of conductors and the movement of the conductor in the magnetic field. So this is what a simple loop generator looked like. And uh, this was the uh, source of magnetic field north and south poles then we have this rectangular shaped coil with coil sides a b and c d and this was the direction of flow of current when a coil side is towards the north pole the direction of flow of current will be this when it is towards the south pole a particular coil side the direction of flow of current will be in this direction no matter which coil side if CD coil side is in this towards north pole, the direction of flow of current will be upwards. If AB is towards south pole, the direction of flow of current will stay the same downwards. Now, this coil, it rotated in clockwise direction in the magnetic field. And I also we also discussed that these points, they, they actually exist in pairs. 1, 5, the EMF will be same, that is 0. At 2 and 6, the magnitude of the EMF will be same, but the direction will be opposite. In 6, it will be negative. 3 and 7, EMF will be maximum. Why? The reason I have discussed it there. The 3 and 7, when coil side AB is at 3, the EMF will be maximum but at 3 the emf will be in the positive direction at 7 the maximum emf will be in the negative direction similarly 4 8 2 6 so these are all pairs these points are in pairs now when uh, the coil is in this position ab side is towards north pole cd is towards south pole the current flow is in this direction in this way from B to A, A to D, D to C and then through the load in this direction. So this is the induced EMF, the output EMF. When the coil rotates by 180 degree, okay, okay, it rotates by 180 degree. The coil side AB goes towards the south pole side. See here? And the coil side CD, it comes to the north pole side. Now as I said pre uh, previously that irrespective of which coil side is there, the side which is towards the north pole, it will have this current flow direction always. The side which is towards the south pole will have this downward flow direction of current. Now, when the coil rotates, you notice because of the rotation of the coil by 180 degree, the wires here are twisted. It undergoes a twist. Because of this twist, the direction of flow of current through the load is reversed. Here, the direction of flow of current is in this way. Through the load from, if you look at this picture, is from right to left. But here, because of this twist, even though the direction of flow of current through the rectangular coil is the same, you know, same because north pole it will have this direction, south pole it will have this direction. It stays the same but because of this twist in the wires, the coils, the flow of current through the load is changed. It is now here from left to right. Polarity is reversed. Here is from right to left, here is from left to right. So it, instead of uh, getting DC, because it, we are discussing DC generator, DC simple loop generator, we are getting AC. So here the commutator 
the component it comes into play to convert this AC into DC. So a commutator, the basic definition of a commutator is that this device converts the AC voltage generated in the loop into DC voltage. So we can call it a mechanical rectifier because it is a mechanical component. So as it converts AC to DC, so it is a rectifier because it is a mechanical component, so it is a mechanical rectifier. So what this commutator does, okay. So let us see what this commutator does. So before that, let us uh, see the design of this uh, component, the commutator. This actually consists of a rotating cylinder, okay. It is a rotating cylinder. Two uh, equal halves of the cylinder are joined together by uh, with mica in between. And there are also two stationary brushes made of, of carbon attached to both the sides. But they are, you know, loosely attached. Okay. The cylinder rotates but the brushes are fixed. The cylinder can rotate but the brushes are fixed. You know, it, 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 it rubs through this brushes okay the cylinder rotates through this brushes these two brushes are fixed only the cylinder is movable so this here see here the c1 half is towards the left side c2 towards the right now because of rotation c2 goes to the left c1 to the right so this cylinder part this cylinder is only the movable part these uh, brushes are fixed okay see Again the same thing, rotation C1 is on the left, C2 to the right because of rotation in clockwise direction, C2 goes to the left, C1 to the right. Brushes are fixed, they undergo no movement. So how this commutator converts AC into DC? Okay, let's see. Here we have the same loop coil which we discussed previously here, see, here is the circuit without commutator here it is with commutator connected here the brush on the left hand side this brush is connected to the coil side which is facing the north pole which is towards the north pole and uh, this right hand side brush it connects the circuit the load to the side the coil side which is towards the south pole it does not matter which coil side whether ab is towards north or cd is towards north or ab is towards south pole or cd is towards south pole whichever coil side is towards the north pole this brush connects the left hand side of the load the negative side of the load because it will become negative because of the current flow this left hand side of the load is connected to the coil side towards the north pole because of this brush left hand side brush and the right hand side brush connects the right hand side of the load to whichever side to is facing or which is towards the south pole the brushes are fixed now see here AB is towards North Pole, CD is towards South Pole. The direction of flow of current is in this way, upwards in, in the north, hand, north side from B to A, A to D, D to C, downwards in the coil side towards South. So this is the flow of current through the load, which was the same here also. Here also it was the same. The problem came here because of this twist in wire. So how the commutator solves this problem? No change with respect to this and this, same thing. Only this twist caused the problem which gave us AC. So how this problem is solved. Now, when the coil rotates by 180 degree, AB goes to south, south pole side and CD comes to north pole side, the flow of current, the direction of flow of current through the coil is maintained upwards 
in the north pole side downwards towards the south pole side but here still still the cylinder rotates okay the cylinder c1 and c2 here c1 is towards the left c2 towards the right here c1 goes to the right c2 comes to the left but the brushes they stay fixed the brushes are fixed so as these brushes are fixed and only this inner cylinder it rotates this coil side which is towards the north pole gets connected to the left hand side brush this coil side which is towards the south pole gets connected to the right hand side brush so the direction of flow of current through the coil and the direction of flow of current through the load they stay the same in both the cases there is no twist the twist is solved the twist problem is solved because when the coil rotates the cylinder rotates along with it okay these two coils coil sides are connected to the two halves of this cylinder okay the load the two ends of the load are connected to the two brushes there is no direct solid connection between the load and the coil please pay attention here there is no solid connection between the ends of the load and the coil they are connected only through the commutator and the brushes the two halves of the commutator the cylinder and the brushes the brushes connect the load to the coil okay the brushes and the cylinder the brushes and the cylinder they connect the load to the coil now this when the move, the coil rotates the cylinder rotates along with it but the brush the brushes they stay stationary they remain fixed so the direction of flow of current through the coil and through the load they are maintained in both the cases okay here when the coil side ab is towards north cd is towards south c1 is towards the left side c2 is towards the right side but when it ro undergoes rotation by 180 degree the cylinder also undergoes rotation by 180 degree but the brushes they stay there the brushes do not rotate okay the brushes are staying fixed so that's why the direction of flow of current through the load is maintained so this dc the, uh, the ac voltage which we got in this case okay without the simple loop generator without the commutator the ac voltage which we got in the previous case we are getting a dc voltage here okay it's get, it's it got converted into dc so again pay attention here the brushes and the cylinder the two halves of the cylinder they act as a intermediate between the coil the coil side and the ends of the load the problem initially was when the coil rotated there was a twist here which caused the direction of flow of current through the load to be reversed it was getting reversed but because of this commutator this commutator in this through this commutator the ends of the load are connected to the brushes and the coil sides are connected to the two halves of the cylinder when the coil rotates the cylindrical portion rotates okay the cylindrical portion it rotates but the brushes they stay fixed okay the carbon brushes are fixed so the direction of flow of current through the coil and through the load they stay the same even after rotation and that's why the emf the induced emf is also in the same direction in both the cases so this ac gets converted into dc <clears throat> so this is the rule of commutator so that's why i 
discuss this in a separate video otherwise if I would have discussed it there it would have created con confusion so this is the commutator action okay fixed brushes movable segments of cylinder okay so this is how we get a DC output voltage so I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much